Happy weekend, everybody. I'm uh, sitting here on my rooftop. Uh, life's starting to feel a little bit back to normal, so I figured the best way to celebrate such a uh, momentous occasion is to do a little happy hour exploration through the amazing and delicious beers of Vietnam. For those of you that don't know, Vietnam is known for their beer culture. Uh, if you're gonna drink any alcohol here in Vietnam or partake in any sort of nightlife, um, in a local sense, the Vietnamese really, really, really appreciate going out, sitting with family and friends, eating a meal, and of course, drinking beers. Um, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a like little link right here, but there's going to be a, a picture of the god of liquor, uh, which I saw in a Chinese uh, medicine museum here in the city. Um, so obviously, if it's important enough to have their own unique god. Um, for alcohol, especially the god of wine and beer. Um, you know beer is serious uh, in the country that I'm in. That being said, uh, for our happy hour, we're going to do a little exploration in the various types of Vietnamese beer that you can find, uh, the typical ones that you would find at a restaurant or uh, at a supermarket or something. So what I've done is I've gone to Family Mart, uh, which is the Vietnamese version of 7-Eleven, kind of. You can, have, you can find 7-Eleven here too and I've procured the very, very high quality, low price, standard Vietnamese beers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little chat, we're gonna discuss the flavors, um, but most importantly, I'm just gonna show you what people drink here and kind of try to give you some stories about uh, what it's like to drink in Asia, what it's like to party in Asia, and um, something to, you know, to inspire you if you're at home and if you're a little bored and you're missing going out and stuff, so. Um, I'm here in solidarity as well, so uh, let's get started. The beers that I've purchased here. So the first one, LaRue. I'll be trying all these beers, but I just want to go through. So Bia LaRue with the Tiger. 12,000 Vietnam Dong in the store, which is about 40 cents. We have beer 333, um, triple the excellence. Uh, and most importantly, they call this Ba 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 because uh, this uh, ba means three in Vietnamese, so la rue, ba ba ba. Now this is, a, this is an interesting story. Um, I'll go into it when I drink it, but we have Red Horse Beer. This is the extra strong brew, 8%. You can even see the can is pixelated, which you, know, you can kind of feel that it's gonna be good based on the fact that the quality, they couldn't even step up the quality on the can itself, so that's exciting. This was 13,000, so just a bit better than la rue. And this is, uh, I believe, 22,000, which is less than a dollar. And it's a tall boy and it's 8%, so very dangerous. We have my all time favorite, Zorok, the cheapest beer of them all. Uh, it's 11,000. It's a lager beer and it's been awarded world medals. I'm not sure what world medals it's awarded, but more importantly, look at that awarded world medals. And our last one here is Bia Saigon, the each region of. Vietnam has their own beer, so you can find Bia Hanoi and you can find Bia from Hue as well. So it's 100% spring barley, and most importantly, it's premium quality beer from Vietnam. So this one's definitely brewed here. I'm pretty sure all of these are brewed here, um, but I cannot verify that as a fact as of right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up. We're gonna see how it pours. We're gonna see how it tastes, and I'm gonna describe in detail the amazing flavors of Vietnamese beer. All right, guys, so first things first, we're going to try Bia LaRue. So they've decided on the branding here to put it in French. Qualité d'origine, original quality. And it's since 1909, so uh, it's gotta be good, right? So the first important part of the can is, can you open it well, right? So here we go. Ooh, that's a nice sound. When we're, you know, testing beers in cans, it's good to, you know, get a nice smell. Oh, yes, mm, delicious. It's craft, it's beautiful, velvety. Um, I'm just kidding, guys. It's, uh, most of this Vietnamese beer is, <laughs> is pretty average, if not, uh, it's very Budweiser-y is the best way to describe it. So let's, let's look at a nice pour. Woo! All right. As you can see, the typical beer that they drink in Vietnam is a Pilsner, which is just like a light, hoppy beer. Um, doesn't have a lot of body. And uh, you can pretty much just drink forever. You'll never get too drunk, which is nice. Um, and they often drink for long periods of time here in Vietnam, so it's very typical to put ice in your beer. And I know what you're saying. You're like, 
how can you do that? That's heinous. That's against all the rules I've ever heard about beer. I agree with you. Like, I'm totally with you. But, uh, you know, uh, when in Rome, right? So when you get a beer, when you get a beer here, don't be surprised that someone comes over and tries to slide a big old ice cube in there. Um, and to be honest, since it is so hot here, the ice cube ensures that your beer is always cold. And since, I mean, look at this, it's so thin, um, it's not affecting the body of your beer at all. So, I mean, obviously I wouldn't do it with an IPA, but uh, if you're doing it with LaRue, um, why not? So here, cheers guys, LaRue. It's tasty. I really enjoy LaRue. It's very like neutral flavor. It's very like, uh, yeah, like Budweiser. It's not Bud Light, so it's not terrible, but it's also not a craft beer, so it's not that good. Um, however, I do I do quite enjoy it. It's my go-to beer since it's exactly 50 cents. And uh, I, you know, typically in canned beers, I'm not really like that into canned beers in general. Um, I think bottles are definitely the way to go. But if you have a can, like, you know there's bad cans, you know there's good cans. So when in Vietnam, LaRue is definitely a way to go. So as we try our next beer, which is Ba Ba Ba, um, 333 in Vietnamese, um, a good question to answer is, what is the Vietnamese drinking culture and uh, what makes it different than the rest of Southeast Asia? So what I can say is that Vietnam has very little alcohol rules and regulations. In other parts of Southeast Asia, you have uh, very conservative Muslim or Buddhist practices. So um, typically, like you can't buy beer at certain times, or if you're Muslim in Malaysia, for example, you can't buy beer at all. Um, here in Vietnam, there's no rule for walking around and drinking alcohol, I mean, at least from what I've seen. Um, and their bar culture is incredibly rowdy. So um, they, uh, they really go for it. This is one of the only countries where it's also legal to sell nitrous oxide balloons, um, also known as whippets. Um, and typically, you can find it in bars and, and clubs all around the city. Um, can smoke in bars and they really they really go for uh, like a shot culture drinking culture and it's very common also for women to drink a lot here which in kind of conservative countries it's not um, it's not too common so um, yeah the the drinking culture here is interesting but the most typical drinking culture is this kind of village sit around a table with a group of typically a group of men um, or if they for family celebrations and just like drink kind of all night kind of culture so um, it's very different than what I've seen in, in, in Europe and what I've seen in the, United, the US. Um, a lot of people don't even go to bars. They just go to these kind of like drinking areas where they find a small table and they bring their own beers or they just buy the, the beers with like a markup of like, I don't know, like 10% of what you would normally get in the store. So it's, it's not like the typical Vietnamese person who's like probably over 30 is not the person that's like going to the bar and getting a fancy like $10, 10 euro cocktail. Um, they're drinking Ba 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 with the boys. So uh, here's Ba Ba Ba. You can see it's a little bit darker than the LaRue. It has more of a hoppy flavor. Give it a smell. Yeah, and uh, let's give it a shot. Yeah, this one like tastes more like a beer. Like, uh, I can't really explain it. Like this one kind of tastes like like water, you know, it's like you could drink, you could drink like a thousand of these and you would never be, you'd never feel the effect of it. This one you kind of feel like you're like, kind of starting to get get in the realm of like having a proper beer. Um, something that makes you feel like, yeah, I'm having a beer. I'm gonna save the red horse for the last one, but um, as we move on to Zorok, the cheapest and uh, it's, it was awarded medals, which is important. The best part is all of these say that they were awarded various medals um, and it's hard to, like LaRue has also a gold medal, like who, <laughs> who's awarding these medals? Like what are these organizations? Um, so anyways, uh, so Pierce, do they have, um, do they drink wine in Vietnam? Well, the answer is yes. Um, you can find some interesting French like remnants here and they do have a decent little wine culture. Um, there's a mountain region north of here um, called uh, Dong Nai province near Da Lat and apparently they, uh, they make some pretty good wine. I would argue that the wine here is not particularly very good. I've tried two brands. Granted, they're both the cheap brands because I'm kind of like a cheap guy when it comes to drinking. Um, and both of them were very acidic and very tannic and just like not awesome. So I don't think people typically come to Vietnam to drink wine, nor do the Vietnamese people have like really a wine culture. It's just like a very adopted thing. So when you go to these old school countries with a lot of like 
typical traditional practices, people kind of just do what they do and the majority of people don't like adapt to these new things. So yeah, of course there's like really cool bars, like you can pay $6 for a beer here and get like really nice craft beer. There's a whole bunch of amazing craft breweries in Saigon, but uh, that's, a tip, that's a specific market and uh, a lot of these, you know, a lot of these uncles, they're not, they're not going to those places. They're just doing the same thing. They're buying Bia Saigon. They're drinking it with their, with their family and with their friends in the way that they've been doing for the last hundred years. So, we've got Zorok in the mug. Does it look any different than the other beers? I would argue not too much. Yeah, so the thing is like, if I can pay 11,000 for this, which is like 45 cents, why would I pay 14,000 for this if I'm pretty much gonna have the same experience and uh, talking about alcohol quality, like, not quality, but alcohol, uh, percentage they're all around five percent so uh, you're kind of just gonna get the same thing in different cans so here you go we're gonna try Zorok oh oh that one didn't taste good oh maybe it's because oh oh Zorok you've betrayed me today normally I'm a big fan of Zorok but um, maybe after the 333 which actually tastes like beer um, Oof, it's very like just grain flavor. It's kind of like if you've ever had like a Ham's in the United States or like a Milwaukee's Best. Um, it's beer. Uh, is it good beer? It's not. It's really not good beer, but uh, it is beer nonetheless. So, uh, and that's what happy hour is for. For me, happy hour is all about just drinking beers with friends, you know, going out, meeting people. And yeah, it's nice to get a little buzz on, you know, around five or six, but um, yeah, I think happy hour is a very special time and it's a time that should be shared with your friends, with your family, with your loved ones, uh, with people you care about, you know? The best conversations I have in my life are sometimes, you know, over a beer with a good friend. Um, I live for that stuff, absolutely. So now we're on to Bia Saigon. Bia Saigon, it's special, so they're special. They have Saigon Red, Saigon Green, and Saigon Special. So this is what they had in the store. Um, each one has a little bit of their own thing, but they're all kind of the same. I think probably the, the best and most interesting thing about this beer is the can itself and the very excellent logo here. Um, apparently they've been brewing since 1875, which makes me assume that it's high quality because it's been happening for so long. So we're going to get a nice, uh, a nice beer crack. Ooh, that's nice. Um, when you drink out of cans, the, how do you guys drink out of cans? My, I typically just do this. Some people uh, have told me that if you turn this thing around, if you turn it around, this is built for a straw. Is this true? Is this not true? Also, my brother, who's a bit of a savage when it comes to beer, he just punches out the whole center of this with his finger and drinks it for better airflow, which I don't disagree. It's just a bit of a savage move. I see you, John. And we're gonna put the Saigon special in here. So here we have Bia Saigon. Wow, it's the same color as all the other beers. Are you guys, are you guys, are you guys getting this? It's very impressive. So, the smell test. Yeah, it smells like beer, tastes like beer. Let's give it a shot. This one's nice. This one, this one and LaRue, these ones could be the exact same beer, basically. They don't taste any different, at least on the surface. So what I can say is that I'm a big, beer connoisseur. I really like all the different kinds of beer, whether it's Pilsners or Hefeweizen or Porters or Stouts. I'm a big beer guy and I can really taste the flavors. Like with wine, I'm lost. I know good wine, I know bad wine, but with beer particularly, I have like a pretty good palate. So what I can say about Vietnamese beer in general, especially if you're just drinking like canned beer, it's good on a hot day, it's good on a hot night because it's always hot here at night, and uh, it's just something to do with friends in a nice way. So you don't drink this beer for the flavor, for sure, and I would never argue that this is good beer. So as we move on to the Red Horse, this is where it all kind of goes down. So the Red Horse for me, it symbolizes one of my first nights in, uh, in Vietnam. And so people always ask me, you know, is it hard to make friends when you move to a new, um, to a new place? And uh, the answer is yes. You have to be very outgoing, you have to be very um, willing and open to go and meet new people. So the way I normally do it, especially when I'm in Southeast Asia, is I use couch surfing. So couch surfing has a, you know, that typically couch surfing, like you go meet up with someone and stay at their house so you don't have to pay for accommodation. But in this case, uh, couch surfing has a hangout function. Um, I'll put the link below if you guys want to check out the app if you've never seen it before. And you can just hang out with other travelers or other locals who, uh, who just, you know, just want to hang out. 
So it's a really good way if you're not staying in a hostel, if your hostel's not very social, to go and meet people um, and get a beer if you want to. Um, traveling can be very lonely sometimes, and moving to a new city can also be very lonely. So I've used this in many places I've traveled. So. Uh, yeah, my first night here, moving in here, I met this guy named Jez, who I'm still friends with. Jez, if you're watching this, shout out. And uh, yeah, he turned me on to the Red Horse beer. I, I met him and I met another Finnish guy who spoke fluent Vietnamese, um, and then we went to a club. It was just very weird. The whole night was very strange, but it's, it's really strange to see a foreign person um, like be so committed to Vietnam enough to, uh, to speak Vietnamese. Um, so he did these long trips and it was very impressive. And, uh, the theme of the night was the Red Horse beer because typically there's two types of 8% alcohol. There are, is the alcohol that is really good, like the Belgian style, like a Duval. If you guys know Duval, that's for you. Delicious. Then there's this. This is not Duval. This, especially if it's not ice cold, tastes like death. And what I can say is this can here is not ice cold. So, we're gonna give it a crack. Oh yeah. We're gonna give it a smell. Here we go. Ugh, and it's just, it's just thick. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, do you guys remember when you were young and you went to your first club and it just like, you know, you're drinking beer outside because you just want to get that buzz on and it's just, it's just bad. You know, you're just chugging it and it has no value and it's hard to even swallow. Um, when I was in Berlin, I used to drink a lot of double elephant before the clubs, which is like 12% and it literally, it's literally unpalatable. So, the red horse, we've poured it. I've never seen it out of the can. Um, it seems to be the same color as all the other beers, which is a little bit troubling, but when you smell it, it just has this smell that just is like not inviting. I don't know, really, I don't really know how to explain it. It just kind of has this uh, puke-like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. So, I'm gonna give it a sip. Oh, so, oof, oof. so, oof. it's, it's really that bad. I'm not like, I'm not making fun to make fun, but like, it has this taste that's like, it's like starts fine, it's like a Pilsner, it's like a little bit bitter, and then it gets this fake alcohol flavor that's like, it makes you like kind of recoil with kind of fear, and you're a little confused as well, as you're like, how can a beer taste like this? So, what I can say is when it's poured out, at least, if it was poured out and it was cold, and it was like from a tap, that'd be pretty good. I will say that would be pretty good. Um, this, however, straight from the can, kind of lukewarm, it kind of burns like you took a shot. It's really, it's really not good. It's really, really not good, so. Ugh. Yeah, it's just, it's just not a pleasant beer. Disgusting, disgusting. So, what I can say is drinking in Vietnam is very fun. The bars in Saigon are wild. They're ridiculous. They're always a good time. You always meet great people. Um, and it's just like a, I mean, typically it's pretty safe unless you find someone doing balloons and they fall over because they make themselves pass out, which I have definitely seen. Um, but other than that, I mean, the, the beer culture here is, is, is pretty good. Most people are very relaxed about alcohol. They don't care about what age you are. They don't really care about the rules and regulations just because the people in general have a very positive experience with alcohol, uh, typically. Um, the men have, <laughs> all have the kind of penchant kind of beer belly, which is kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, generally, uh, compared to what we see in the U.S., um, the drinking culture here is a little bit more different and the club and bar culture is pretty wild. So, as a follow-up video, what I'll do is we'll go see Bia Hoy. Bia Hoy is the very cheap, fresh tap beer that gets uh, sold to little restaurants and normally you can get a, a glass for like 30 cents, so we'll find a Bia Hoy. And then hopefully one night coming soon, we'll go to Bui Vien and we will uh, see what nightlife in Saigon is all about. So. Um, cheers guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you're interested in any of the beers I drank today, uh, send a comment below. I would love to hear what the uh, drinking culture is like in your country, and um, if you have any questions regarding nightlife in Vietnam, uh, feel, free to, feel free to drop a comment and I'll definitely respond. So, um, cheers guys, cheers guys, cheers guys, cheers guys, and cheers to you. Hope your quarantine is good, hope you're all staying safe, and cheers. Refrescado. Woohoo!